Your Brain on Buddhism – The Neuroscience of Awakening Prior to the advent of the brain, there was no color and no sound in the universe, nor was there any flavor or aroma, and probably rather little sense, and no feeling or emotion. Before brains, the universe was also free of pain and anxiety. Roger Sperry, Nobel Prize in Medicine Neuroplasticity is the ultimate expression of Buddhist teaching, that the mind can change the brain and the brain can change the mind. Rick Hansen, author of Buddha's Brain I don't know what you mean when you say big mind and little mind. First of all, there is the brain. J. Krishnamurti Our brains have the amazing ability to change themselves. This is called neuroplasticity. Our brains are not fixed structures, rather they are dynamic systems that are constantly changing and evolving in response to the environment. In fact, research done in the last decade has shown that the brain is much more malleable and responsive to change than previously thought. Neuroplasticity can occur at different levels of the brain, from the level of individual neurons to the level of entire brain regions. One of the primary features of neuroplasticity is that it is activity-dependent. This means that the changes in the brain are driven by experiences and activities. For example, if a person engages in a particular activity repeatedly, such as learning to play a musical instrument or practicing a new language, the brain will adapt to these experiences and develop new neural connections that support these activities. Neuroplasticity also has important implications for understanding the relationship between the mind and the brain. If the brain has the capacity to change and adapt in response to experiences, this means that our minds also have the capacity to change and adapt. But what do we mean when we say mind? What is a mind? The mind is nothing but thoughts. There is no mind without thoughts. Therefore, because of the neuroplasticity of brains, we can radically change our thought patterns or our minds. We can change our thought patterns to have happier or more beneficial minds. But even more than this, we can also develop the capacity to slow or even stop thought completely by the activity of focusing attention on the emptiness or empty silence between thoughts. Many religious and mystical traditions, including many schools of Buddhism, teach that it is this capacity to rest in the emptiness between thought that ultimately reveals the very nature of reality and the reality of who we truly are. In all schools of Buddhism, practical exercises are taught everything from chanting, visualization, mindfulness and meditation to help bring about these changes to the brain and therefore to the mind. These Buddhist meditation exercises are, in fact, exercises in neuroplasticity. The brain, by far, is the most complex object in the known universe. There is absolutely nothing else in the universe that comes close. The brain's evolution over millions of years has resulted in new capacities and abilities that have allowed us to adapt to our environments. A key stage in the evolution of the brain was the development of the neocortex. The neocortex is the outer layer of the brain that is involved in higher order cognitive functions such as language, abstract thinking and self-awareness. The development of the neocortex allowed for the emergence of the sense of separate self that we feel. The feeling that I am a me. This sense of a separate self, or a me, is a necessary mental construct that guides and protects the body and mind in its interaction with its environment. One of the main networks in the brain that constructs this self is called the default mode network, or the DMN. The default mode network is particularly active when we are not involved in an engaging task. Put simply, it is the voice in the head commenting on almost everything, non-stop. One way in which to quieten the DMN is to become involved in an activity, such as a sport, a video game, watching something on your computer, etc. 
For some people, however, the default mode network does not quieten down even when trying to involve oneself in an activity. Attention Deficit Disorder, or ADD, is said to be, at least partially, caused by an overactive default mode network. This can make it impossible to concentrate or become completely involved in a task. There is just too much noise in the head to allow us to focus completely. When the default mode network does quieten, that is when we say we lost ourselves in an activity such as sport, reading, game playing, etc. Buddhist meditation and mindfulness practices focus our attention on an object or activity such as the breath, a visualization or the present moment as a way of quieting the default mode network. Why? From the Buddhist perspective, to quieten the brain's default mode network through concentration on an object or activity is to open up an opportunity to have a radical insight into our sense of separate self. That radical insight is that our sense of separate self, or me, is utterly illusory. It is important to note that this insight into the illusory nature of our sense of separate self does not destroy that sense, but rather allows us to see it not as substantive, but merely a temporary and contingent function of the body and mind. I is merely the body's way of doing business, of navigating the body through the world. In this recognition of our sense of separate self, we understand that the functional I does not indicate anything at all about who or what we truly are. Buddhist meditation and mindfulness practices bring about real changes in the structure of the brain that help us recognize the illusion of separate self. In Buddhist philosophy, the sense of a separate self is believed to be the result of a series of mental processes that create the perception of an individual self separate from the rest of the world. These mental processes are believed to be the source of suffering and dissatisfaction as they create a sense of separation and isolation, of intense stress and striving. Through the practice of Buddhist meditation, individuals can learn to observe their thoughts and feelings without judgment and to recognize the impermanence and interconnectedness of all things. By developing this awareness, individuals can begin to see through the illusion of a separate self and instead experience a sense of connectedness and interdependence. Buddhist meditation not only helps us to see through the illusion of separate self by decreasing activity in the default mode network, but by also increasing activity in the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for higher order cognitive functions such as attention, decision making and self-awareness. By increasing activity in the prefrontal cortex, meditation can lead to improved self-awareness and a greater understanding of the processes that create the illusion of a separate self. Both the limbic system and brain neurotransmitters regulate our emotions. The limbic system is a complex network of brain structures that are involved in emotion, motivation and memory. The limbic system includes several key regions in the brain, including the amygdala, hippocampus, thalamus and hypothalamus. These structures are interconnected and work together to process emotional information and generate appropriate emotional responses. The amygdala, in particular, is a key structure in the limbic system that is involved in processing and regulating emotions. The amygdala is responsible for detecting potential threats and triggering the fear response, which involves a variety of physical and cognitive changes, such as increased heart rate, sweating and heightened attention. Cats have an amygdala that, while being very responsive, is also easy to return to a relaxed but alert state. This is why cats were often worshipped in some ancient religions as highly evolved beings. The amygdala also plays a role in the processing of other emotions such as happiness, anger and sadness. The hippocampus is another important structure in the limbic system that is involved in memory formation and retrieval. The hippocampus works together with the amygdala to form emotional memories which are memories that are charged with emotion and have a greater impact on our thoughts and behavior. The thalamus is a sensory relay station 
that receives sensory information from the environment and relays it to other parts of the brain. It plays a role in processing emotional information and is involved in generating appropriate emotional responses. The hypothalamus is a key structure in the limbic system that plays a role in regulating a variety of bodily functions, including hunger, thirst, and body temperature. The hypothalamus is also involved in regulating the stress response, which is a complex physiological response to stressors that involves a variety of physical and cognitive changes. The various structures in the limbic system work together to process emotional information and generate appropriate emotional responses. On the other hand, neurotransmitters are chemicals in the brain that are involved in the transmission of signals between neurons. They play a critical role in regulating emotions by modulating the activity of the limbic system and other brain regions involved in emotion. There are several key neurotransmitters that are involved in regulating emotions. These include serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine and GABA. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that is involved in regulating mood, appetite and sleep. Low levels of serotonin have been associated with depression, anxiety and other mood disorders. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that is involved in the regulation of motivation and reward. Dopamine is involved in the experience of pleasure and is often associated with addictive behaviors. Norepinephrine is a neurotransmitter that is involved in the regulation of the stress response. GABA is a neurotransmitter that is involved in the regulation of anxiety and stress. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that helps to calm down the activity of the brain and reduce feelings of anxiety. Buddhist meditation and mindfulness practices have been shown to produce a range of changes in the limbic system and the brain's neurotransmitters. One of the key changes that occurs in the limbic system as a result of meditation practice is a reduction in activity in the amygdala. The reduction results in improved emotional regulation and a reduced tendency to react impulsively or emotionally to external stimuli. Meditation has been shown to produce changes in the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that is responsible for higher-order cognitive functions such as attention, decision-making and self-awareness. Meditation practice can increase activity in the prefrontal cortex. This can lead to improvement in these cognitive functions, making us much more effective in our lives. Through meditation, we can also produce changes in the levels of neurotransmitters in the brain. Recent scientific studies have shown that meditation was associated with an increase in the levels of the neurotransmitter GABA. This reduced anxiety and promoted feelings of deep relaxation. Meditation also increased the levels of dopamine, improving mood and feelings of well-being. Dopamine, the neurotransmitter responsible for feelings of pleasure and reward, has been shown to greatly increase by a regular practice of meditation. An increase in dopamine levels in the brain also leads to greater feelings of motivation. Lastly, meditation practice also increases the grey matter density in the prefrontal cortex, the anterior cingulate cortex and the hippocampus, which are areas of the brain that are involved in attention, memory and emotional regulation. It is important, however, to note that the effects of meditation on the brain are not immediate. It takes time and practice to see significant changes in brain structure and function in the effects of meditation. With the long-term Buddhist meditation and or mindfulness practice, there will be beneficial changes in the structure of the brain. The benefits will be of two main types. First, there will be a lessening of activity in the default mode network of the brain, which can lead to greater insight into and understanding of the nature of the self. The recognition of the sense of separate self as being illusory can lead to a lessening of anxiety of all types, personal and social. This can help to cultivate a humorous, non-serious, spontaneous and playful attitude toward the living of life. Second, 
The positive changes brought about by Buddhist meditation and mindfulness practices in the brain's limbic and neurotransmitter systems can help to increase one's human functionality. This can help to make one more effective and successful in their lives. The neuroplasticity of our brains make all of this possible and achievable. Put simply, Buddhism and its meditative practices are practices and programs of neuroplasticity. These practices make real scientifically proven changes to the structures of the brain in ways that can be very beneficial to us. By cultivating positive mental states and reducing negative ones, we can change the structure and function of the brain in ways that promote well-being and happiness, a key goal of both Buddhist teachings and practices. In recent years, there has been a surge of interest in the intersection of Buddhism and neuroscience, as researchers and scholars seek to understand the ways in which meditation and other Buddhist practices can influence the structure and function of the brain. Here are 10 of the best recent books on Buddhism and the brain. These books provide a detailed analysis of this fascinating intersection, drawing on the latest research in neuroscience and psychology. These books provide a roadmap for how we can use meditation and other Buddhist practices to cultivate greater awareness, compassion and well-being, and to unlock the full potential of our brains and our minds. Buddha's Brain by Rick Hampson provides an accessible and comprehensive overview of the ways in which meditation and other Buddhist practices can shape the brain. Drawing on the latest research in neuroscience and psychology, Hansen offers practical advice for how we can use meditation to cultivate positive emotions, reduce stress, and enhance our well-being. Altered Traits by Daniel Goleman and Richard Davidson explores the long-term effects of meditation on the brain and the mind. Goleman and Davidson draw on their own research, as well as the work of other leading scientists in the field, to provide a detailed analysis of how medication can promote lasting changes in our mental and physical health. The Mindful Brain by Daniel Siegel A comprehensive overview of the ways in which mindfulness can affect the brain. Siegel explores the science behind mindfulness and offers practical exercises and meditations that readers can use to cultivate greater awareness and well-being. Why Buddhism is True by Robert Wright explores the ways in which Buddhist philosophy and psychology can help us understand the nature of the mind and the brain. Drawing on insights from evolutionary psychology, Wright argues that many of the teachings of Buddhism are supported by scientific evidence and that meditation can help us cultivate a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. The Buddha Pill by Miguel Farias and Catherine Wickholm explores the rise of mindfulness and meditation in modern Western culture. Farias and Wickholm examine the scientific evidence behind mindfulness and explore some of the potential risks and drawbacks of meditation. The Science of Meditation by Daniel Goleman and Richard Davidson. Goleman and Davidson offer a comprehensive overview of the latest research on meditation in the brain. They explore the ways in which meditation can affect the structure and function of the brain and offer practical advice for incorporating meditation into our daily lives. The Emotional Life of Your Brain by Richard Davidson and Sharon Bagley explores the ways in which emotions can shape the brain. Drawing on decades of research, Davidson and Bagley show how emotional resilience can be cultivated through practices such as meditation and offer practical advice for how we can train our brains to better manage our emotions. The Joy of Living by Yonge Mingyur Rinpoche offers a Buddhist perspective on the nature of the mind and the brain. Rinpoche draws on his own experiences as a meditation master to offer practical advice for how we can use meditation to cultivate greater awareness and well-being. The Brain That Changes Itself by Norman Deutsch explores the ways in which the brain can adapt and change over time. Drawing on case studies and scientific research, Deutsch shows how the brain can be rewired through practices such as meditation and other forms of mental training. Zen and the Brain by James H. Austin explores the intersection of Zen Buddhism and neuroscience. Austin draws on his own experiences as a Zen practitioner and a neuroscientist to offer a unique perspective on how meditation can shape the brain and the mind. 
These 10 books provide a rich and varied exploration of this topic, offering insights into the ways in which meditation and other Buddhist practices can promote positive changes in the brain and enhance our mental and physical health.